But for the Chargers, they've had a great offseason so far. They cut Mike Williams, which cleared $20 million from the team's books. They traded Keenan Allen, which saved the team $23.1 million. And now they have the fifth overall pick. Yes, I get Josh Palmer, Quentin Johnston, and Darius Davis are the receivers on this team. I mean, that is certainly the worst in the NFL. But when you have the fifth overall pick and a loaded receiver class, maybe the most loaded ever, you're in a great spot. And even if the Chargers do trade down from five to something like 10 or 11 or 12 or 13, they're still going to be able to get a very good receiver, a potential number one type of weapon. Brian Thomas Jr. is the first name that comes to my mind at the top of my head, but if the Chargers stay at five, they can get Malik Neighbors, they can get Marvin Harrison Jr. If a team trades up to four and takes a quarterback, JJ McCarthy, for example, the Vikings could do that, the Broncos, or they could get Joe Alt, the best tackle on this draft. We know, of course, Jim Harbaugh and how much he emphasizes offensive line because you are what your front is. If you don't have a good front in the NFL, you're just not going to win games. Look at the Chiefs and the 49ers, the teams that went to the Super Bowl, the Lions, and the Ravens, the teams that lost in the championship games. All of these teams have good fronts, good run games, but for the Chargers, the offensive line definitely disappointed last season. They signed Trey Pipkins to a long-term contract, but he was never able to hold down right tackle, and Corey Lindsley was lost for the year early in the season after playing just three games. Johnson, Sawyer, and Slater, they just didn't take big leaps. So it's crucial that the Chargers went out there and they brought in another body. They did get Bradley Bozeman in free agency. I believe it's actually pronounced Bosman. Sorry about that. Of course, uh, 29 year old. He has familiarity in Greg Roman's scheme, and he's definitely going to step in as the starter. Not to mention Will Disley, who I'll get into a little bit later, is a good run blocking tight end. Before Los Angeles, what it comes down to me is going to be how they continue to develop their young players and how they draft. Because you've got Quinton Johnston, who, yes, had a horrific rookie season, but he still has potential. The Chargers also have Asante Samuel, Zion Johnson, and Thule Tupelotu. These guys under Harbaugh in 2024 are going to be much better, and I'm super excited for it. But what about the new offensive coordinator in Greg Roman, who served as the Ravens offensive coordinator from 2019 to 2022? I understand that Lamar Jackson was the quarterback of those teams, so that's going to help it out a lot. But Baltimore finished in the top three in the league in rushing yards per game in each of Roman's four seasons, including first in his first two seasons as the offensive coordinator. So you have a guy who is known for having very good run games that's huge for the Chargers, a team that has struggled as much as anyone the past couple of years to run the football the ravens also in those years finished top 10 in points per game in two out of his first four seasons as well as top 10 in offensive dvoa during his final year with the team so for los angeles they're going to be built through their run game which is something that we haven't seen with justin herbert because they've just continuously thrown the ball and kept throwing it and that's just not a winning formula yes austin eckler is fantastic but he has regressed the past couple of seasons and there hasn't been just a run game whatsoever there hasn't been running lanes being clear there hasn't been creativity from the play calling this chargers team is just going to be much better overall in 2024 especially with the additions of you know, gus edwards and hayden hurst J.K. Dobbins did have a visit with the Chargers uh, a few weeks ago. He's only 25 years old, and he's proven himself when he's been healthy. And we know that because he's averaged 5.8 yards per carry in his pro career. I mean, Greg Roman's offense, you just need multiple running backs that are capable of with good vision, guys that can find the open hole, and, of course, have the acceleration to be able to get down the field and break tackles when necessary. In 2023, Gus Edwards, he led the Ravens with 198 carries for 810 yards and 13 touchdowns. And he had, of course, 12 catches for 180 yards. So you're getting a workhorse type of running back. Now you just need a guy who could cobble to him. And yeah, Isaiah Spiller, remember he was what, a fourth round pick in the 2022 draft, but is he gonna be the type of guy that the Chargers are looking for? Probably not. So I do think they wanna go out there and either draft a running back day two, day three, or just bring in Jacob Dobbins because he's going to know the system and he's going to be familiar with playing with Gus Edwards. I mean, it just seems like a match made in heaven, but there's been some underrated moves as well that the Chargers have made in free agency. For example, going out and getting Will Disley, who was a 2018 fourth round pick. He just fits the mold of being a tough and gritty player. Disley also is going to provide some juice in the passing game. His main role will be run blocking, but he's going to help revamp the Chargers ground game, which is something, again, that was a huge emphasis coming into the offseason. The Chargers, of course, can go out there and just sort of continue to build the receiver position, the offensive line, then they're going to be in a great position. Tyler Boyd is an option. The Chargers have shown interest in him. So have the Chiefs and the Dolphins, Lions, and the 49ers. Going into your ninth season in the NFL for Tyler Boyd, he's coming off a season where, I mean, he did have not exactly the best year, but a lot of that has to do, of course, with the Joe Burrow injury and he plays behind 
two one wide receiver ones in Jamar Chase and T. Higgins, but he would fit right into the Chargers. He'd immediately become their wide receiver one, assuming that they don't draft the receiver at number five, which honestly I think they will. So, but he would be a great wide receiver too. We know he's capable of that. In terms of the free agency signings, we just haven't really seen anything for the Chargers at receiver. So it seems like they're going to be doing that through the draft, or maybe they pull off a move right before the draft, which would be really cool. But I do want to talk to you guys about that fifth overall pick because it's extremely exciting. I mean, we're talking about potentially going out there and getting Joe Alt, who, I mean, he would fit this team well. Joe Alt would fit this team extremely well because the Chargers gave up 43 sacks last season, which was the 13th most in the NFL. Harbaugh, of course, built Michigan into a champion with a dominant offensive line in the last you know, three seasons. So it, it definitely wouldn't be a surprise if the Chargers did draft Alt with the fifth overall pick. But it just seems like Malik Neighbors is going to be the guy. He, he's definitely a better prospect than Alt. And because you've got Justin Herbert as your franchise quarterback, you want to go out there and get him a weapon, somebody that's a good deep threat, that's amazing after the catch, somebody that just has game-changing athleticism. Not the best size, obviously, for neighbors, but outside of that, I mean, he's basically about as perfect of a prospect as it gets. My favorite fit for the Chargers at five would be Brock Bowers, but I don't think he's going to go five just because he's a tight end. Is Bowers a top three prospect, maybe even top two prospect? absolutely but just because he's a tight end i mean if you draft uh bowers top five i mean he's going to be immediately one of the most paid tight ends in the nfl and tight end just isn't a premium position so if you have the fifth pick it just wouldn't make a lot of sense i mean for example kyle pitts was a top five pick he was a really high draft pick and we know he hasn't exactly worked out and then you look at a guy like for example uh, Robert Gronkowski was a second round pick. No, George Kittle, Travis Kelsey were day two picks. And then um, uh, Sam Laporta was a second round pick, day two pick. So you can see that tight end, these guys that end up being the best. Mark Andrews is another guy that I just thought of at the top of my head that was a day two pick as well. So yeah, the, the Chargers, they're in their best interest. I could see them drafting either Malik Neighbors or Joe Alt or trading down out of five. That would definitely be good. I mean, there's just so many options for the Chargers. It's pretty absurd, but I love how this team has a ton of draft picks. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine draft picks with needs at receiver, cornerback, offensive line, interior defensive line, and running back to complement Gus Edwards and Isaiah Spiller. Overall, this team is in a great spot. They've done fantastic work so far. Credit to their new head coach and their new offensive coordinator their defensive coordinator their general manager makes a whole new staff but the chargers i mean they essentially went from a team that had no hope around justin herbert to a team that is building something special but we still need to see them go out there in the draft and see what they do right all we can do is just hypothetically speak but yeah in terms of free agency for the chargers i've liked the moves they've made but this is a team that's going to be building through the draft and it's going to take them probably maybe anywhere from one to three years but i do think the chargers in that span will, will get a super bowl i truly do have a lot of faith in hardball